Well, hello again, everyone. What we're going to look at quickly today is setting up what's known as administrative role separation on a read-only domain controller that's running on either 2000 or 2000 or 2008 or 2008 R2. What this option provides you is the ability to give a standard user administrative rights, local administrative rights specifically, on a read-only domain controller so that they can perform basic functions such as starting and stopping services, uh, installing Windows updates, uh, driver packages, so on and so forth, but they don't have any rights inside your actual domain structure itself. So what I have here is uh, RODC. We're going to log on to it um, and look at setting this up. There's actually two different ways of setting this up. Uh, and depending on how you like to do it, uh, they don't intermingle too well. And they both have sort of their benefits and drawbacks. So to get this set up, we have to log on with domain admin rights. So I'll log on as my administrator. Give it a second. Now. When we pop in here, <clears throat> there's actually, again, two ways of getting this done. Uh, you can do this through command line, or you can do this graphically through Active Directory users and computers. Uh, arguably, the easier way, obviously, is graphically, but there's a slight issue with it, uh, depending on how you want to actually have it configured. So if we take a look at that option first, I'm going to open up Active Directory users and computers to check this out. Now, uh, I've got a couple of users here that I'm going to use to detail this. Uh, one's Bill, one's Bob, and we'll use them in two different scenarios when setting up the two separate options. Now, one quick note about this, because I am about to make some changes here, but being on an RODC, that shouldn't be possible. But if you've ever worked with an RODC, what you'll notice is that if one is available and has connectivity to it, whenever you open up something like Active Directory Users and Computers, it will automatically connect to a writable domain controller so you can make changes. So that's not an issue here. Now, if I open up the domain controllers OU, I see the computer account for my current read-only domain controller. When I go to the properties of this account, there is a Manage by tab. And you can specify either a user or a group to be the manager of this RODC. And what this will actually do is provide you local administrator rights to the RODC to whichever user or group you specify. The drawback of this is you can only specify one user or one group. You can't have multiple, like a list. And you also don't have the ability of specifying anything other than being a full-blown administrator, uh, whereas the command line option gives you a little bit more flexibility. So what we'll do here, uh, before I get this done, is I want to create a group, because the best option whenever you're doing something like this is preferably to use a group rather than an individual user. So I'll go back to my Phoenix OU. I'll create a new group, name it RODC Admins, a default global security group will work perfectly fine. And I will make Bob a member of this group. Now also a quick note here, if we take a look at Bob and we see what exactly he's a member of. You can see he's just a standard domain user and now he's part of the RODC admins group, which is at this point in time nothing special. So I go back to the properties of my RODC's computer account, select the Manage By tab, hit the Change button, and then specify that the RODC admins group should be the manager of this RODC. Hit the Apply option, give it a second, Hit OK, and it's done. So what I can do now is actually log off. Log back in, in this case, with Bob's account. And first off, you should see right off the bat, if you've ever done this before, that Bob is logging on to the console of a domain controller, which being a normal user, he shouldn't have the capability of doing. But now that he's been delegated the ability of managing an RODC, he can log on. So when I open up first off, because one thing people get a little freaked out about this at first, is you'll see Active Directory Users and Computers is available. I'm logged on as Bob, just a standard uh, local admin at this point. And it's still thinking. And you'll see I, I can open up Active Directory Users and Computers. I can view 
options inside here. I can take a look at things. Here's Bob's account. But one thing I can't do is make any changes to anything inside here because I don't have rights to. So let's just say for sake of argument that I want to make myself a domain admin. It's like, all right, fair enough then. No. And it's not going to allow me to actually make that change. So while yes, you can open up certain utilities, you can view things sitting inside them, you actually can't make changes to them. We can only make changes to the actual local system. Uh, for example, if I take a look at the services console, I could go through here and stop and start services. Uh, say for whatever reason I want to restart the DHCP client service, I can go through here and I'll successfully stop and start that service if it's having a problem at that point. I can open up control panel and I can check out Windows updates in which case I can configure updates if I want to I can install updates that are available uh, I can select optional updates I'll just leave one there <clears throat> so that they'll actually be installed and actually install these updates locally on this machine so it provides me local administrative rights to this box but not domain level rights so if I log off and then log back in as my standard domain administrator and spelling is somewhat important the other way of getting this done rather than using the graphical option which we'll leave in place here for a second is of course to go through the command prompt and there's actually two different commands and I'll open up two separate prompts that you can use to get this done one of them is called DSMGMT directory services management and there's an option called local roles and when I choose an option to list roles you'll see that there's a basic list of groups and these are local groups that you could add users to to provide them whatever capabilities that specific group provides administrators server operators backup operators whatever you need at that point but you can also use the ntdsutil command to actually get this done as well it also has a local roles option and you can see you can list the roles here and you see the exact same thing both commands will get you to the exact same point neither one in this case when dealing with uh, administrative role separation has any more or less capabilities than the other so we'll just close out NTDS util use DSMGMT to get this done just because I opened it up first so now one thing uh, again when we did this graphically already and we made Bob uh, specifically an administrator of this machine through the manage by option if I take a look at um, the administrative option what you'll actually see here is this is saying that it has no members and the problem when trying to use both of these is this they, they don't communicate back and forth so when I make a change here you don't see that change on the manage by tab when I make a change on the manage my tab you won't see that change listed here so there's a bit of a disconnect between the two you should really choose to use one or the other or do a decent job of documenting exactly how you get things done now one advantage this has though is obviously the the granularity that you see it's not just the administrators group that you can deal with it's any one of these groups that you can add somebody to to provide them capabilities but also it's not just one group or one user that I can provide these roles to I can specify as many groups or users as I want whereas the manage by tab you can specify just one group or user so what I'll do here is add bill to the administrators group so this role has been successfully updated. I'll show it again. And you'll see that Bill is currently specified as an admin. All right. Quit out of this. Close my command prompt. Log off. Log back in again, this time as Bill. and you can see bill logs on perfectly fine we'll give it a second here and as you can see I'm not using an activated version of Windows take a look at administrative tools and just for fun we'll take a look at Active Directory users and computers for a second 
Now again, I won't be able to make any changes here, but I can view some information that I want to look at. And specifically, again, I want to see exactly who Bill is a member of. As you can see, he's just a domain user. So normally, if he was in fact just a domain user, I wouldn't be able to log on to a domain controller because they don't have those rights. But specifying that he's part of the local administrator's role through that DSMGMT command gives him local administrative capabilities on this read-only domain controller. Now, it's only RODCs that you can do this to. Standard domain controllers will have uh, the ability of using DSMGMT and NTDSUtil, and you will see the local roles option, but it's basically disabled on them. Uh, standard writable domain controllers just deal with domain level accounts. It's the RODCs that have this ability of specifying a local user to provide, or I should say a local administrator, to provide access to this machine. And they did this because RODCs are meant to be placed in locations where you don't have have normally uh, a domain level administrator sitting there to, to take care of something. This is for smaller offices, offices that don't have physical security on your machines. So I can provide a specific user in that office the ability of running certain things uh, on the RODC, being a full-blown admin or being just a server operator, whatever I think I need the capability of doing to potentially offload a little bit of work for me if something goes wrong. So, and again, it's just two different ways of getting the same thing done, either going through the command line or going through graphically. Uh, one or the other technically isn't any easier. It just depends on which way you want to go. So I hope this helped you out if you're ever going to set this up, and I'll talk to you later.